Right, attribute manipulator. This actually came in in version uh, 11, uh, was for version 12, but because a whole lot of stuff going on, we put into version 11. A lot of people may know it's there, uh, but if you don't, you'll see that you can use a lot of it now. So it basically works with string, vertex, segment attributes and properties, as most of, and model and project attributes. But your problem with most of this is you've got all this data, but you want to put it out to a GIS system or something else, and they only have string attributes. Dumb, dumb systems, that's all they can have. You don't have other things, and often they only have X and Y, they don't even have a Z, they hold it as attributes. So you've got to be able to move this information around to get it out to these other systems. So this can create, delete, manipulate attributes and properties. So that's what it's all about, manipulating, putting them around, moving them around to shoot them out maybe to another package, or if you read data in from another package, which has just got a whole lot of dumb string attributes, you can then use them to set properties inside 12D. So basically there's two options, you use a file to set it up and then you apply it. So that means you can run in chains, you set these up for a certain data source or what you're going to do, you just put them in chains. So it just pops up a little panel which has zero on it and it's got a little plus button there for actually adding in rules. So basically you're telling it what to do. So it's pretty simple. Uh, there's actually a mechanism there that you can attributes to use and attributes to modify. So you can, I've got some things I want to do here and I'm going to modify some other things. Basically that's what's going on. It is a two-way street. So whatever it says you go in one direction, often you go in the other direction. I'll just point that out quickly. So the choices you get when you click on there, you've got none, which are certain reasons you use that when you uh, want to go the reverse direction. You've got string attributes, vertex attributes, segment attributes, and then string, vertex and segment properties and some project and model attributes. And there's also on the where you're going, it has that same sort of choice. So you, not just a one directional thing, you can take string properties and turn them into attributes or the other way around. So it's like a two way street. These ones are pretty straightforward, string, vertex and segment properties that you may want to copy them in. You can do things like I want vertex, uh, uh, vertex attribute number three and do something with it. Now of course with vertices and segments you go, hmm, there's a maybe infinite number of those or 27 or 33. Sometimes you can give a number like that and you can satisfy it because you might know, you can say it's the last one, you can say uh, minus one, it's the last one, minus one. So you, but if you want to do it for an unknown, you can also do that sort of stuff. You can set it up there so it'll take, I will take all my vertex attributes and I'll move them into string attributes and I'll say underscore one, underscore two, underscore three. So you can map all your vertex attributes into string attributes and same with segments. And we can come out in the reverse direction as well because that's what you happen to think about. You've got, don't know how many segments or vertices there are in your super string, how do I get them to uh, string attributes? So that sort of thing is all possible. Or you might just want to pick vertex number three and make that a string attribute. Often people only use strings which have got two points in them no problem, just talk about them as points one or two. Uh, here's there's a little U and an M. If you've seen those things, that's actually the uh, attribute picker. So if you click on that, you can then go and pick a string. It'll pick out all the attributes in it, segment, vertex, and string attributes. So you can go and pick them to put it into there rather than having to type it in. Right, when you actually get the choices, we'll go to the others, the property, vertex, and segment properties. They've got things, these are the string, all these sorts of things you can either uh, get those values and stick them into an attribute, so the name, colour, weight, line style, height, the 2D length, the 3D length of a string, the 2D area, diameters, culverts, things, all those sorts of things, then you can take those and whack them into an at into a uh, attribute. For the vertex, again, there's a whole lot of things for vertices, and you've got, uh, so string, the vertex ones and the segment ones. So all of those then, you can map them quite simply now into attributes. Remember though, it's two-way street. So you can do the reverse. So if you've got an attribute of uh, anything of all, you can map it into those things if it makes sense. So you could say, you could map a string attribute to the colour of a string, so, or a vertex attribute. Or you might take a Z value, take a, an attribute that's uh, got a Z value but it's a bit of text and map that to a Z value in the string. 
So it's a two-way street. That's the main thing about it. So if you're into attributes, which everyone is these days, it'll allow you to do lots and lots of things. Uh, you'll find it very quickly used in all sorts of applications with attributes, BIM, GIS, ADAC, and so on. And a lot in survey pick up and set out a lot of attributes now being used by our surveyor friends. So uh, it's essential. It might come from those systems in just a dumb list of attributes. You can use manipulator to put it any way you wish. There's another option there called labelling attributes and properties. Before we had the uh, label map file, and this is just uh, an extension of it. We've got a lot more choices. The label map file just puts a bit of text there. And this will be actually demonstrated, so I'm not going to say too much about it. There's an option there to actually, again, set up a file, and then you can actually apply it. So again, you can set it up in chains and things. And basically what it is, you can actually go in there. There's a whole sort of label types you can use to set up. The most just working for string attributes. We'll extend it to the other attribute types later, and properties. And so you can put a point, a point and a leader, a uh, pipe and a leader, a culvert and a leader, and things like that. So you can say, not just putting a bit of text, but you can have leaders and things for it as well. And you can also have lines of these things. So you can go and say, I want to have these three things, three bits of uh, text or attributes, one under each other. And so you can group them together. And so there's a group in, so you can say you want them to put them together. But these will be demonstrated in the birds of a feather, so I won't say uh, too much about it. Right, so uh, there's a whole lot of things to do attributes for you. Uh, just be aware, as you get asked about attributes, you can really manipulate them well. And there is a lot of that already in version 11. Not the labelling, but the actual attribute manipulator. It's already, for a lot of it's there in version 11. If it's not something there that's not there, it's, then we've added it in for 12, which is a lot more. <laughs>